Alright. Well, today we're going to do some water testing. We have the uh, tank is clear and clean. Filter socks off. Then a 23, 4 gallon water change somewhere in there. And uh, now we're going to test the parameters. This is just uh, no comparison going on here, just how I do it. Maybe uh, give some pointers on it, some of the new guys, new people who are doing it one way. But first thing I did was I made a holder. This has uh, marks down the uh, key elements that I'm testing for. So from the last usage I've uh, cleaned these all out. They're upside down so they dry out real good. I will uh, rinse them off in the test water. back in the holder. There's probably again a thousand ways to do this. Now I use a big uh, hospital syringe. If you know anybody in the medical field, they're easy to come by. Uh, fill it up with some test water. And what I like about this is it knocks it off into uh, five milliliter increments so it's really easy to, to fill up so I can just So, now we have them full, or to the 5 mil line, and first thing I'm going to do, this one's just a little full. Alright, first one up, nitrate, 10 drops, number one. be shaking for approximately 30 seconds. I've already done that to uh, help out speed up the video, but I'm still going to give it a little, little shot. It's, it is part of the process and I found out that it is important. 10 drops. That's the nitrate. Now the nitrate requires just a little extra time. They want you to shake it for about a minute. I'm going to do that. And explain that I test for approx I test for eight elements here. A lot of people do say that's too many. It's not necessary unless you're having some kind of crisis or something. But or you're cycling a tank, what have you. It's just something that I got in the habit of doing. Um, something. That I enjoy doing. And then I always notate in my little black book, which I keep one for every year. I can go back years and see anything. And it's good to know little subtle changes and why. I can go back and I can always say, you know, did I add this? Was, uh, you know, what happened? You know, so anyway. So that's going to set approximately five minutes before it gets a full color change. I'm going to do ammonia next. Bottle number one, always first, of course. Eight drops. Eight drops it is. Give it a little stir. Okay. 
And this comes out real fast. And eight drops again. Yeah, this uh, part two of ammonia, it really comes out quick, so you got to be careful with that. And give it a little shake up. Put it back. You go pH next. Shake. Always mindful of the, the dates that are on these. Two, three, four, five. And from what I've found out, the date is not an expiration date. The date is an actual pro product date when it was when it was made. So you generally count your years from there. A little nitrite. Not really necessary. It's always the same. It never has changed on me. But I do it all the same. Five drops. These all say right on the bottle what you use, how to use it. Toss. And now phosphate, PO4. This is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That comes out pretty quick too, that number one. But number two comes out like mud. squeeze the bottle really hard on the phosphate there. Give it a little toss. Okay, before I get into my cage and my calcium, I generally go back because it's been a few minutes. I'm looking here. I have a color comparison chart. Of course, still refer to that after even after all these years. But I can tell pretty much at first blush what's going on here. Uh, I have no measurable amount of ammonia, no measured amount of nitrates. My pH is setting at uh, probably, I would say, a little over 7.8. It's a little low, but it generally runs a little lower in the daytime. Nighttime it'll get a little higher, so I'm not, may add a little buffer a little later. Nitrite, zero, no measurable amounts. And, uh, Phosphates, I can tell here by the color, everything is fine there also. So, for my OCD, <laughs> I will write down the results here. Zero. Three, zero, and H3. Zero, pH is 7.9. You know, two is zero, PO4 is zero. Now, I'll do a little KH, DKH. Go to four, start out with four. Goes to a blue color. Six, I've got a couple there because I know I'm going to go up to about nine. So there's six, seven. Eight, nine, and it's starting to change. And it changed to yellow. Okay, so that was 10. That's pretty good. Gauge to gauge 10. That's pretty much on. I, I, that's fine with me. Not a big deal. My calcium's been kind of wigging out on me lately. Been running a little high, so just did that uh, 20 plus water change. So I'm hoping maybe that'll help us out a little bit. So 10 drops of number one. solution which you go through a lot of so 
with the calcium, I know I'm going to be up in the 20 range, so I can go ahead and add like 16 drops without worrying about it right away. There's 16. Goes into a pink. It's 20. Now I'll start. 21, 22. Yeah, 25, it started to change. So that's, um, I don't know. Um, what's 25? It's 24, 25, so it's about 480, 500. Still, still a little high, but I'm cool with that. Ain't bad. <clears throat> so, the results of that are, I'm gonna say, 480 to 500 on the uh, calcium. Magnesium, that's a whole kind of little different deal. Got the Elos mag here, it's pretty pretty accurate. Mag's been running a little high also. So what we start out with is we have a vial that comes with it. Rinse it out in the tank water, make sure it's empty. Got a syringe that comes with it. Rinse it out, fill it up with uh, five milliliters of water. Test water. I'm going to bring it down to the two, which is you're putting three milliliters of water in here. I'm going to use the region A. And you're going to add three, four. I want the change. I'll show you six. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. I know this is going to get up to close to thirty. So that's twenty-two. Five, six, seven, eight, three, nine, thirty, one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Okay, thirty-three. It changed from uh, an amber to a green. So region A. 32, 33, okay. And we're gonna rinse this out. Rinse it out with some tap water. Rinse it out again with some test water. We're gonna do the same thing with the syringe. Pull up five. Knock down three. And then we're going to take this magnesium powder here using the small end of the spoon that's provided. Take one spoonful of that. I'll shake, and you're going to add five drops of Regent B to this mixture. A little shake, got a nice deep pink on there.
Now, reason D, this should be uh, eight or so drops, maybe ten. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Change from a pink to purple. So, and then what we do is we take the 6, subtract from the 33 from above, it's 27. Alright, so we multiply 27 by 50. going to give me magnesium reading of 1350. Eh, a little high. About 100 off. But it's not a big deal. I got plenty of coral. They love to eat it up. So, and these things, like I said, these tests, they vary from brand to brand. Same thing with the uh, hydrometers so they're they're a guide uh, you want to keep an eye on your your uh, parameters make sure they're all within range if you see something that's crazy test it again and if it's still crazy go to the forum ask some questions take a sample to your local fish store you know start going getting getting some good solid info and then making sure that that uh, what you're seeing is actually occurring before you start adding buffers or you know doing anything crazy so as anybody's told you on the reef but there you go that's the way I do the uh, water testing after I've done a water change and they generally work hand in hand unless I see something going going on in the tank and I want to do some testing and see if, if things are messed up so thanks a lot hope you learned something hope you take something back with you thank you